here at the Independence Reformed Bible Church. We allow for questions following the service. Who has the first question this morning? Yes. The uh, Bible says that we should obey the governments and pray for the leaders. And uh, Jesus said uh, they show him, uh, ask to show that the coin that gives the Kaiser his money. Um, why should we be concerned about what's going on now? Um, they the world. We're going down, I'm sorry. What we, why should we be concerned, concerned about them? We, we follow Jesus, we make the right things, and uh, since the, we, we don't need to fight or to, to do anything because uh, God will fight for us, we don't need this. Why you are uh, so... Um, I felt some anger on you right. about governments and yeah. all this. You, you I, I live in a government. I don't. You don't know what government I am, where I came from. Right. But I never feel so angry, and I don't care what they do. Right, right. I would ask this. Would uh, I'll put it this way? And um, to, to answer your, a lot of good questions there, I want to answer the last one first, or address that first. Um, I mentioned Joseph Stalin here this morning. At one time, he decided that all of the uh, farmers in the Ukraine owed him all their grain. And as a result of that, millions starved to death. I would guess that at that point you would care about what the government does, right? We don't stand with uh, uh, discrimination. We don't, uh, uh, we don't encourage it. Right. But we don't uh, fight uh, against governments also. Like if there is a demonstration, I don't need to go. Because God said you should uh, um, obey and um, you should pray for this for them. I only pray that the things will get cut up so that we live peaceful. Do you, yeah, and I believe that's what that is, what's being said there in Timothy. Therefore, I, I urge that prayers and give me a thanks be for all men, especially those in authority, that we may live a peaceful and godly life. Yeah, right? Right. Like, don't go demonstrate or do a preach against, or otherwise you will have problems. Well, well th thank you for your question. I'm saying this morning that we have problems with a state that is bulldozing churches already. We already have problems, right? That's already a problem. All the, like in China, for example, all they're doing is worshiping, right? And then the state comes along and bulldozes their churches. Is that, that's a problem, right? Okay, what do you think they should do? They go fight against them and take bulldozers and go uh, uh, also uh, do the same like uh, the bad people do? At, at a minimum, that's why we have imprecatory, that's why we have Psalms prayed against wicked people who hate Christ. Yeah, right. Well, at a minimum, we need to pray, but we first need to recognize this because I think we have a big problem here in this country where we do not realize that there are people arrayed against the dominion mandate, as I said early on. The United Nations, for example, hates the idea of a growing population. God says that's a good thing. Now, I, I get it that you don't want to demonstrate in the streets. Are you okay with going down to your city council and appealing to them about something they're doing wrong? Are you okay with that? Exactly okay, let's, let's say that the uh, state is c coming along and they want to take a piece, of the, a piece of your property. They did. Okay. Now, do you appeal to them or do you just stand back and say, you know what, you can take, take it all if you want? I will go to the court. Right. Exactly. I don't like uh, demonstrate on streets and okay. uh, use terrorism. And, uh, right. But you demonstrated the court, didn't you? Yes, I did. Like this is we agree. Jesus did when uh, they slapped and he said, why you are slapping me? Why you right. are doing this to me? Right. He was in court himself. Right. Yeah, so we do agree with demonstrating, if you will. We might disagree on how it should be done to the most effective ways. But I think we definitely agree that there is a time to stand up and challenge the state when they do wrong things. 
I think we agree on that point. Yeah, that's okay. We don't start with uh, like bad things or bad people. Right, and it's our job to speak up, right? To speak up, yes, but not to fight. Well, I think they see it as fight. Because as we saw here, the uh, state authorities here, just because the saints exist, they did nothing to them. They decided that they want to destroy them. And my point this morning is, we need to understand that what was happening there was the state authorities wanted to destroy these people just for existing. And we've seen this in other places. We've seen it in the Soviet Union. We saw it in, in Rome. In Rome, for example, um, the, 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 the early Christian church, they were not persecuted because they didn't recognize the authority of the emperor. They were persecuted because they did not worship the emperor, and for that they had to be killed. Now, they saw that as a fight. See, what, what we, this is the way I see this. I see it as what we see as standing up for righteousness, they see as a challenge of their authority. And that's where the war comes in. And they were even, I mean, they even had the opportunity, and the Roman authority said, listen, all you gotta do is sacrifice to the genius of the emperor. You don't have to make a big presentation. All you have to do is take a little bit of fur from an animal and flip it onto the altar, and we're good. And the Christians wouldn't do that. And so the Romans said, these people are belligerent. We can't work with them. We gotta destroy these people. Look, they won't even take a little bit of hair and put it on the altar. What are we gonna do with these people? See, they saw that as, as war against them. And what I'm saying is, they will always see, when, when you want worship for yourself, when you've already thrown God out, you're gonna find ways, any kind of way at all, to fight and fight and fight those who worship Christ. And it's our job, I believe, to get the message out that these people are wrong and they hate their neighbor. And that's really what I'm saying today because I, 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 I would argue that state authorities are destroying their neighbors right here in this country. And you, you and I may disagree on that. But, yeah, okay. but when, you, when you stop somebody from, from exercising simple charity, that's a destruction of one's neighbor. And what, what a lot of, my frustration is a lot of Christians stand back and they say, well, well, you know, they just don't quite know what they're doing. They need a little more education. And that's not where they're coming from. They hate the idea of individual, they hate the idea of the dominion mandate and people, godly people, um, reproducing, having many children, and taking dominion over the earth. If anybody's going to have dominion, it's going to be them. Good questions. I, I didn't answer all your questions. I hope I got to, to some of them, but we have other, other questions. Yes. I think I think just a follow up on that. Just a, we need to oppose the wickedness. And I think what Joel, what you're trying to say is so often we don't. We don't even speak up against. I'm saying we don't even recognize it. That's the worst thing. But we don't really point. So we don't even recognize it. We're cooperating with it. But God. Some some of us might recognize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I hope, I hope so, yeah. But, but I think the thing is, whether we're out <laughs> protesting um, against abortion or against a wicked government or taxation, it's theft. I think, I think what Joel's saying, we do that, we must oppose it and so that other people recognize it. Is that, is that the... Uh, at, at a minimum. At a, at a minimum. Yeah. Hey. Otherwise, we are not loving our neighbor. No, we're not. Um, it's a good question about the uh, coin. I want to um, address that. You know, the gift of Caesar, what is Caesar, is God, God's, what is God's. At some point, we have to ask ourselves a question, what do we do when, not if, but what do we do when the state t wants to take what is God's? What do we do then? Just hand it over? What do we, what do? We do? And that's a question we all must ask, because the state will eventually ask, not ask, demand what belongs to God, what do we do then? And who do we go for that authority? Do we go for the state? Does the state get whatever they want? Or do we go to the word of God to see what the state is allowed to ask for and what they're not allowed to ask for? And just me saying that is subversive to an awful lot of people. That, that would be seen as traitorous. Just, just me saying that to a lot of, to a lot of folks today. Um, there were a lot of good questions there. I'm sorry I didn't answer them all. Yes? So, this might not be totally appropriate, but 
an alternative to statism would be a completely Christian nation and government. Government. The, the, the job of the state, as was mentioned, is to punish evil. That's it. That's, and, and even, even uh, Paul later on says, that's why we pay taxes. And, and Paul in Romans 13 defines the role of the state very strictly there. Now, what's happening is the state is taking the role of the family, and that's why, that's why Karl Marx hated the family. Hated, called it slavery, and so forth. But the alternative to the state is, give, is staying out of the way and let the godly family and the, and, and the godly church do its job. I think it has already been done. It, in history, time in yes. history, it's been proven that that's possible. Uh, absolutely. Um, I give you. I want to give you two examples. Um, the Byzantine Empire. We don't talk about it very much. In that empire, it was extremely peaceful. The state authority was extremely limited. And I'll give you an example of charity. We can't touch this. They had hospitals in the Byzantine Empire. They were completely supported by charity, 100%. Doctors. Nurses, buildings, beds, free, supported by charity. And not only that, they actually supported, they supported inspectors that went through and asked the, asked the patients if they were being taken care of. They were that serious about loving their neighbor. That, that's happened in history. That's just one example. Another example is, it, is the time of, of Alfred the Great, if you will, when, the, when he became a, a champion of defending the English people against the Danes who were constantly, um, constantly de you know, ruining their crops and carrying them off into slavery, burning the villages and so forth. That's what he took his time up. He didn't take his time up with like, controlling everybody's economic exchanges like we saw here. He took his time up with defending his neighbor, which is Romans 13-ish. And it is said that England thrived under that time and it's also said that you could put a gold necklace out by the road. And people were so self-governed and so serious about their neighbor's goods and property that they wouldn't, it wouldn't even take it. They'd say, that necklace belongs to somebody else. I'm not taking it. Self-government. Governing themselves. That's, that's really our answer there. Everybody governs themselves. They follow God's law word. And so we don't need this overarching state to be smacking our hands every time our daughter, three-year-old daughter, doesn't brush her teeth before she goes to bed, which is where we're headed. Other questions? Yes? I was going to comment that most of what your sermon has been about today is pointing out the problem and trying to analyze what's behind it. You haven't really talked about what effective solutions might be. Um, What, that would be a whole other topic of what's the best way to, to go against the tyrannical demonic government might be. Um, That'll be next week. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, so you're, you may or may not be advocating protesting in the streets. And you may or may not be advocating you know, you know, actually um, militaristic ways of going I, I actually think that's the least effective way. Yeah. To be honest with you. I think it can be effective I think it's the least effective. I think I think what the statists hate the most, and Marx was like this, they, they hate families where the word of God is promoted in that family and the kids are taught God's word. I think that's what they hate the most. And I believe that is the mo that is the number one antidote. There are other things you can do, yes. But you know what? I, I I'll say this, if you're out there in the streets protesting and your family's going south, your kids are gonna grow up to undo everything you thought you did out there, out there in the street. Every time. And I've seen that myself, I'm old enough to have seen that. People are all tied up with let's do this, let's demonstrate here, let's get out there and vote and all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, their kids, their kids are out there saying it's okay to be gay. I've seen it. It is, it is in family though, I think we see that in Abraham and Isaac and in Jacob, how they, how they fought. It's, it, it is family first, and status hate the family. Yes, Wes. Would you, personally, would you consider America as an example of limited government working? 
at one at one time. At, I mean, yeah, and well, Lincoln's the same way at one time. Yeah, it's a certain way. It's, yeah. it's the same. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a time uh, a friend of mine built um, actually your uh, your cousin's husband built a deck on his house, paid three hundred seventy-seven dollars for permits. That was that was Josh Josh Woolley. I remember a time you didn't have to no permits. You just build a deck if you wanted to. Now, and don't think that that $377 is going to stay there. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. How about this one? So here's one for you. Vaccinations. If you live in California, you got to do it. Risk jail fuck time. Yes? I was wondering, like, when, uh, uh, when Israel put uh, Shaul king, God was not satisfied about this, but he said, this is what your heart desires, so you do it. Like, God doesn't like uh, having governors and kings and all this in the world. But sometimes, some people do it with uh, my church because we don't vote for governments. They said uh, to us, uh, what if there is no governors, no, no kings, how things will be done on the world, there will be anarchy. And uh, you said about controlling yourself, uh, some people can't control, even if they are good Christians, they are weak, you know. There is always the, 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 the fighting between the body and the soul, so the spirit. So how, the, how you imagine, this is a good, a beautiful theory, but it's not practical. How you imagine the world without governors? Yeah, I'm not saying the world without governors. I'm saying the world with governors the way Romans 13 says it's supposed to be. The way Romans 13 says that the, that the authority, state authorities are there to punish evildoers. And they, should ex and they should be here to punish evildoers, not to punish people for opening a seminary or for being charitable. No, not, not at all. In fact, um, uh, I, I know I've mentioned Karl Marx here a few times before, but that's actually how he started out, interestingly enough. Um, he started out by saying, we're, we're going to implement this new communistic world order, and then we won't need the state anymore. And what happened was the state became, he, he threw out God, and again, by the time he was done, he had nothing but the state. That's how he started out. I believe that as Christians, we cannot do that. The Bible says we have a, a state to punish evildoers, and that punishment of evildoers has to be against, God, uh, against God's law, because God is the only one that can even define evil. Once the state then begins to define evil on its own, anything goes. It's evil to open, open an orphanage, for example. Do you think, uh, I, I, if I understand you well, you think about the governors who follow the Bible when they govern. Is that what you uh, think that uh, this is the ideal uh, Okay. No, no, no question about it. Um, if you get a chance to read um, what, something that David said toward the end of his life, he talks about those who are fit to govern. He talks about people who are subject to God's law word. He, he said it four different ways. He said, these, he, said, he said these are the people that are fit to govern. Anybody else is going to be a problem, make things worse. So David said that, and David was obviously a very uh, qualified leader and king. But uh, America now is uh, taking everything related to God in the Constitution. And nobody in the church does anything. No, it's true. <laughs> not, even, not even saying anything about it. So what do you say about this? Well, what I, I, I wish there were a thousand other pastors saying what I'm saying this morning. But I'm telling you this morning, I think that most people just don't even care. Because it hasn't affected them yet. We're okay with abortion because I haven't been aborted. You, you know what I mean? We're okay. It's okay with my neighbor. And I think we're failing to love Christ and we're failing to love our neighbor. And that's what we see. We don't really care. I believe, I'm going to tell you this. I believe that, that, that our church ethic today says you can love God, but you don't have to love your neighbor at the same time. And I don't think you can do that because Christ said the first command, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind. And the second one is like it. You have to love your neighbor. And the aborted, our, our neighbor, the one, the, my friend who got taxed right off of, off of his land, off of his land that he worked very hard, he lives right here in south of New Holland, hardworking man, he, got, he had to sell part of his land to pay his land taxes. I believe that's ungodly and wicked. 
I don't believe that's like a, uh, oh, you know, um, boy, somebody just got let out, out of control. No, I think it's ungodly and wicked through and through that he had to sell his land that he developed just to pay his taxes to people who don't even care about his land. Yes? Just a, just a short note for anyone who, Peter Hammond, when he was here, we went out to dinner with him, and he made a very good comment about the United States being an empire. We are not a republic. We are not a democracy. We are not any of those. We are an empire. And he, he laid it out very well. He said, when you look at Lincoln, how he is enshrined in a temple, how he sits there with the with the with the pillars and and throne and it, pardon he's on a throne yeah, he's on a throne um, just something to think about I, I don't have a whole lot of comments on it but it is something to think about that we are not we are an empire across the world we're looked at as an empire as an evil empire I will comment on okay. <laughs> Empire is correct. You know, the Israelites were never an empire. They were a nation. They had these limits to where they were, and they, and they weren't go, going out there and conquering for all kinds of, all kinds of geog geographical space like everyone else was. They were not an empire. They were simply a nation that was supposed to show the other nations the value of God's law. We see that in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 4. And you can't say we haven't become an empire. We're bombing all over the place. I mean, they... Name a place in the map right now where we aren't like bombing somebody's poor lights out somewhere. And that's that's our that's our uh, even the, the conservatives. You know, let, let's oh let's bomb them. Empire stuff. Yeah, one other just comment to what, what Conrad said. I think Conrad maybe before we can even find solutions, we have to identify, like Joel saying, we have to at least put the problems out there. Because, like Joel says, I think half the people don't even understand the problem. I don't even think. But if you were to ask 100 people today if we're an empire, you know, what we are, they would all say we're a democracy. When in reality, we're not. Under, under David and Solomon, most of that region paid Israel tribute. Um, you don't see that as analogous to. Uh, no, I, I actually do. Um, the Bible says we pay taxes for a specific reason. And uh, Romans 13, because Paul says, for this reason we pay taxes. Um, it's, interestingly, it's interesting to me that that gets overlooked in a lot of tax discussions, where Paul says very specifically, this is the reason why we pay them. It's in, it's in Romans 13. We pay them to support those who are going to punish the wicked. And I'm sorry, I forgot your question. I'm sorry. Got to say, um, wouldn't that kind of qualify as an empire under your definition? Oh, okay. If everybody else is yeah. you know, paying them tribute. Yeah, here, here's the difference. Um, and I, I, I outlined this in my pre presentation, Who Would Jesus Tax? And that's this. Taxing was voluntary. In the end, they had taxes, but they had no way to forcibly collect them. Now, we can't even think that way in our modern modern uh, modern economy, if you will. Taxes equals compulsion. But under, under Moses, and at least under David, I'm not sure under Solomon, I think, I think things started to go south under Solomon, there was no punishment if you didn't pay the tax. Now that would be like serious control. You, you talk about controlling your government, you talk about that all the time, right? We get to vote for the bad guy or the worst guy and we think we're controlling something. You know what, if you could withhold your taxes, can you imagine how fast they'd come in the line? Who here wants to withhold their, their, their school tax? Raise your hand. Oh, my word. Can you imagine how fast that problem would be fixed? And so that's the beauty of the, of, of the system under Moses and David. You don't want to pay it? We don't have any way to make you do it. You know, it's almost implicit that they know there's something wrong with their taxes if they hold a gun, gun to your head to, to make you pay it. Something funny going on there. Yes, what, Brad? I'll be really quick. Um, I was just thinking um, about, you know, I heard the phrase, like, we will get in trouble if we don't do certain things. Um, I was thinking, I think there does come a point where 
you can allow the state to do certain things, but it, since it's not a compromise to your Christian faith, but I think we're getting dangerously close to times where we'll have to resist for the sake of righteousness. Um, you know, it's happened already, not not necessarily the state, but you know, obviously the Christian baker who didn't want to, you know, who, who would who actually was going to bake a cake, but didn't want to put Adam and Steve on it. But I just want to say that there is a line that you can't cross. You know, um, you know Peter did it three times. You, you can't. You just can't. You need to find where that line is, and you can't. I think a lot of pastors these days don't understand where that line is where you get where like you just let the state do it I, they don't know where their Christian faith comes into grips with that and once you know where that is I think you, you can kind of understand where the state shouldn't cross the line yeah uh, and Brad my, my appeal today is that not that I can necessarily define every line in every situation uh, but what I am calling for is to recognize that that line does exist and we need to start there. And I, I'm afraid that there's an awful lot of even Christians say there is no line like that. You just do whatever they tell us. And that baker, if the court says that he's supposed to do that, then he should just do it. I've seen, I've seen Christians say that. He should do it, obey the government. It's, a, it's offensive. And that's, a, that's an offense to God, that cake. He's supposed to just do it? And that's, that's my appeal. Let's at least start to get it through our heads that these people, these state people, are not people who love Christ and want to promote his word and his goodness. Let's start there. That's news to an awful lot of people, I'm afraid. And treasonous, as I, as I said. All right, well, thank you for your kind attention here this morning and good questions all the way around. Thank you.